The Daily Guide this morning reports that chaos in NDC over new register. Killer landlord remanded and Obinim begging Kennedy for forgiveness. Begging, uh, in parenthesis. Malian petitions CID over harassment. The Finder newspaper, eight hospitals receive 10 ventilators from uh, Peewood Tema uh, warehouse to fight COVID-19. Help protects the independence of the judiciary. The president uh, tells Mr. Unikulendi and three others who were sworn in yesterday. And Sekendi, as uh, Supreme Court judges, by the way, Sekendi, Takradi and Takwa are now hotspots, the new hotspot for COVID-19. Security personnel, informants fighting smuggling to be compensated by Cocoa Board. The Ghanaian Times will evacuate stranded Ghanaians home. Foreign Affairs Minister Shirley Ayoko Boche. President swears in Mensa Bunsu Kulendi as Supreme Court judges. GC net to shut down on Monday as ICOMS takes over. Ghana's COVID-19 confirmed cases uh, also there featuring. These days I don't like to quote from the newspapers because uh, by the time uh, stop press happens, we would have the numbers would have changed on the website. Uh, updates are, are happening thick and fast. Daily graphic. Two armed robbers jailed 100 years. Government here to decide on stranded Ghanaians. 230 ready to foot evacuation bill from South Africa. No registration of schools without PTA. National Inspectorate Board. Ofanko landlord remanded. EC meets political parties today. But NDC declines participation. The BNFT. Aviation's dilemma to open or not to open. Uh, revenue shortfall now over 90%. Ghana Civil Aviation Authority Airport Company may require government bailout and staff proceed on leave without pay. Non-critical projects suspended. And finally, the coronavirus worsens debt sustainability fears as the debt to GDP hits 59.3%. Primary balance um, contracts to 3.4% and total revenue 2.7% of GDP. Uh, GCNet will also shut down on Monday and uh, that's a repeat on the front page of the PNFT. My guest this morning, the Honorable Pius Enam Hachide, is the Deputy Minister for Information of the Republic, and also the Honorable Dr. Clement Apak. He is a Member of Parliament for the Bursa South constituency. Gentlemen, welcome. Pius, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, Johnny. How are you doing? Alive and well. Doc, Solu? Solu, Kubasa. Kubasa. New York, sir. Greetings uh, from the people of uh, Bursa South. Mm. Uh, they, are, they are watching you, as they always do. Right. And they are expecting your visit. <laughs> very, very soon we shall, we shall visit. Um, but uh, I know that you've been in the constituency. What's been happening? Well, I, uh, as required of us as members of parliament, mm. uh, even when we are on recess or when uh, there are critical issues and matters that uh, should occupy your attention, uh, you must always uh, tag base uh, with your constituents. Mm -hmm. Uh, indeed, I've been there for about a month, and I, I returned just about a, a week and a half ago. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, on my arrival, uh, there was a very unfortunate and uh, despicable incident that occurred in Fumbisi. Mm -hmm. uh, this had to do with uh, the fight that broke out uh, in the market area. Uh, just a week ago yesterday, where a young man from one of my uh, communities mm -hmm. uh, lost his life uh, at the hands of uh, another young man. Mm -hmm. uh, it has created a lot of tension, but uh, leadership at all levels have been very active. Mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement has also been uh, quite active. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just want to use this opportunity to continue to call for calm and to reassure the family that has lost a loved one mm. that this is purely a criminal mm. matter <clears throat> and it is being handled uh, by law enforcement. Uh, the rest of us are doing our best mm. and encouraging law enforcement uh, to act expeditiously so that they can you know, bring the perpetrators uh, to book. Mm. Uh, losing a life in, in, in such a way uh, involving practically the slaughtering of another human being mm. uh, has sent Wh Why did that happen, do we know? Well, apparently there was a, a disagreement 
Over what? Between two groups. I mean, the police are still investigating. Okay. Uh, the stories at this point are so many. Mm. Uh, but there are indications that this may be an old, if you like, disagreement or quarrel mm. that has festered for some time. But even so, nobody has the, the right to take another person's life. So okay. we continue to call for calm. Mm. Uh, I've been speaking to the chiefs of Mbisi and UAC, the sub-chief of uh, the community that lost a loved one, okay. Basa, the assemblyman, uh, the DC, mm -hmm. and uh, as of now, I think that uh, at least there is some reasonable level of understanding the fact that this is a criminal offense mm. and that we must all do what it takes to provide information okay. to the security agencies to support them and to encourage them mm. to do their best. But Thank you see, Johnny, just very quickly, you know, Papaya sometimes... Papaya take a bite uh, if, he, if he wants to. Yeah, no, let me just conclude. He can take a bite. He can take a very big bite, actually. <laughs> but we, we must manage that time. No, I know. <laughs> the point I seek to make is that, you know, Bulsa South is a very vast district. Mm. Uh, although the population is not that big. The last census put us at about 40,000. But the police personnel there, too, are very few. The last time I checked, we had only 10. And by the UN standard, it's supposed to be one police officer to 500. To 500. But right. if you do the calculation based on the 2010 census, mm. it means that in Mulsa said we have one police person, personnel mm. to 4,000 people. And we don't even have a designated means of transport for the police in Fumbisi. Mm. We share a vehicle with Sandema, which still has the command mm. oversight. Over, uh, over, over yeah. Bulsa, Bulsa South. So let me use this again to appeal to the Minister for Interior. Mm -hmm. I, I appeal to him through a question on the floor of Parliament that they should do well to augment the number of police personnel mm -hmm. and also provide them with uh, adequate means of transport. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we can do this and work together, mm -hmm. security is a collective responsibility. Uh, at least we should be able to see a reduction in some of the matters that cause us to worry about Okay. Some level of insecurity. Thank you. Pius, uh, take, take a bite on, on this particular one. The concern yesterday, and many are happy that, in fact, the landlord who shot his tenant has been remanded. And many say that's not what we want to start seeing where people are attacking and killing people. Now Doc is sharing this chilling story as well. We don't know yet what may have brought this up, but does it worry you? Well, thank you very much, uh, Johnny. Good morning to you, to the honorable member, and to our cherished viewers. Um, let me state from the onset that uh, I am not on top of the okay. Okay. Uh, issues that uh, my colleague describes from uh, his constituency from BC. Uh, but the way he speaks of it, I think that uh, from the very word go, we must uh, condemn any attempt uh, from anybody's uh, from anybody to want to take the life of another mm -hmm. for whatever reason. There are uh, processes laid out to uh, settle disputes and, and disagreements. Mm -hmm. And so to want to resort to uh, even violence, mm -hmm. uh, to want to physically attack and assault, mm -hmm. and even go beyond that to cause bodily harm and even cause the death of somebody, I think is not the kind of culture we want to encourage uh, in our way of life. Mm -hmm. And so we have to condemn it roundly. No matter, there cannot be any justification, no matter what the provocation may be. Uh, we are told by the Honorable Member that uh, investigations are, have resumed into oh, the circumstances yeah. surrounding the death. All we can say is that the police should uh, expedite. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to get to the roots of these matters quickly and to put them to rest uh, permanently. And so we are, uh, we can only support the police and urge them on to do an impartial work mm -hmm. to uh, conduct the investigations without fear uh, or favor, mm -hmm. and that uh, the truth must come out. Right. And people who have to uh, face the full rigors of the law uh, should be made to face the full rigors of the law as well. Mm -hmm. In the case of the uh, landlord, landlord who also reportedly shot and killed a tenant. Mm. A very also unfortunate uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, and the matter is undergoing the due processes mm -hmm. of law. Mm -hmm. uh, the gentleman, I understand, have been, has been remanded mm -hmm. by a court of competent jurisdiction. That's right. I think that that is a way uh, to proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, it is 
it is despicable. It's unthinkable. I mean, one nobody would have expected mm -hmm. the occurrence of uh, something like this. So, again, our call is to the police to continue to uh, deal with these matters dispassionately mm -hmm. and and quickly as well. But uh, my colleague also speaks of the inadequacy, police numbers. Inadequacy of uh, police and the I I I. I can I, I understand and I do agree with him that uh, the police numbers in our country are a matter of concern uh, to all of us, and that is why it is exciting the sheer numbers of recruitments mm -hmm. uh, that have been happening within the last couple of years. We definitely need to do more. Uh, as a government, we are committed to doing more. We inherited a dire situation and. Uh, at the risk of sounding comparative, mm. I have to also make the point uh, strongly that uh, in the past, mm. government action as far as equipping the police mm. uh, left much to be desired. Uh, well, within, how, how do you mean? Well, we were not doing enough mm. uh, progressively, progressive governments. Uh, had not been doing enough mm. uh, by way of logistics for the police and even the police recruitments. Mm. Uh, the fact of the matter is that ever since this administration resumed office, mm. we have seen some increased recruitments. That in no way means that we have gotten out of the woods mm. or that we have met the international standards mm. of one police to uh, 50 citizens, 500. Uh, 500 citizens. It doesn't mean that we have, we have gotten there mm. at all. We are not. We are still very far away from that destination. Mm -hmm. But modest efforts are being made. Uh, larger num numbers of recruits, uh, police recruits, mm -hmm. are being enlisted. And even uh, on the logistics front, mm -hmm. we've all seen uh, the kind of logistics that is being given to the police now. <laughs> we can only do more. If you go to the police headquarters right now, uh, hangars are under construction for even mm -hmm. Uh, aerial surveillance, helicopters being mm -hmm. brought in for aerial surveillance. That's a movement forward. Under the Alpha project, uh, cameras are being deployed in strategic locations across the country mm -hmm. to help in intelligence. <coughs> that, that is a, 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 a very good uh, development. You, you don't want to talk about the cameras because the <laughs> promise was made by Vice President Baumia that every corner in this country we're going to have cameras. In fact, I remember when Chief Inspector uh, Ashi Levy was brutally murdered at Kwabenya by those miscreants. That was where the promise was made. In fact, he also said that every police station would have a camera in there. And I've been checking. The promise has not been fulfilled. So you don't want to talk about the cameras. No, I want to. <laughs> I, I, I say to you, Johnny, a development is not a, it's a process, not an event. And uh, it takes time and effort and resources to put, put a timeline to it. I, I don't believe so. He put a timeline No, to I it. don't believe so. What, what timeline he did says he put? I, I think he said by the close of that year. Was it 2018 or so? No, I don't. I, that's not my recollection. Okay. And I doubt that knowing our vice president and knowing how governance evolves in this country, mm. uh, nobody will make that kind of uh, 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 commitment. But I, I know. He did. It was I, well publicized. Well, I, a, don't, don't allow him. Well, I, I, I know that the Alpha project has uh, meant the delivery of several cameras across several strategic locations in this country. Mm. I also know that uh, the phase two of the Alpha project is just about un unrolling. And so uh, we are getting there. Mm. But I'm saying that uh, the police numbers, mm -hmm. we are ramping up on them, no doubt. And the figures speak for themselves. Again, logistics to the police, mm. the number of vehicles that have gone, mm. it is also a huge step forward. Definitely doesn't mean that we have uh, delivered all the vehicles, all the cameras mm -hmm. and all that. But if you just oppose with what was met, what was inherited mm. and where we are now, we can admit as a people that we are making some modest gains and then encourage ourselves to do a little more. So is it a priority area for, for us? Security is a matter of priority. So, so what, for example, I mean, what, I, I don't see the heavy push, if you ask me, and right from 1992, I've not seen that heavy push, that we acknowledge that we have a problem, we acknowledge that the numbers are not commensurate with what the UN says we must have, 
And yet we only say, oh, we are are recruiting, we are giving them. A security expert once said, look, people don't fight crimes with cars and just uh, the guns. If you buy the cars, you buy the guns, and the personnel are not there, and they are being overworked, then we have done. I agree. I agree. That's why, uh, and we can have a full discussion on the police numbers, Mm -hmm. and we can deal with the details. I agree with anybody who will say that we need to ramp up on the numbers. Mm -hmm. But that's not also to underrate the importance of logistics because right. the personnel alone with that logistics mm. will also be problematic. Mm. Now, the logistics without the personnel is also problematic. Okay. But I'm saying that we are trying to find a, a fine balance. Mm. I do know that ever since this administration uh, assumed office, uh, we have been recruiting some large numbers okay. of uh, police personnel, not just police personnel, across all the security immigration services, all immigration, that. even in the military. Just a few year, weeks ago, mm. under the Barracks Rejuvenation Project, his Excellency uh, commissioned a uh, brand new accommodation, uh, accommodation for uh, persons in, in the military. Mm-hmm. Uh, other such uh, developments are growing on across the country. And so uh, we are seeing some uh, new impetus into equipping the security services mm-hmm. collectively and also focusing on the police essentially. I can report to you, Johnny. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we have seen some large numbers in uh, in police recruits, mm. and we have also seen vehicles, for instance, okay. uh, over the over the last few years, mm. not eight years, mm. two three years of a new administration, unprecedented numbers of uh, vehicles have been presented to the police. That should help them to do their work. Even the state of ammunition and all that, mm. there are limitations to talk about the proper state. Uh, mm. of the security mm. because it may uh, expose it may, yeah. but, yeah. but even the state of ammunition mm. that the police had before and all we were in a dire situation i, I remember i remember that th- when the kaswa shooting happened of those mttd officers also we spoke about body cams for example for the policemen and uh, bulletproof vests that they should be wearing correct and then we spoke about side arms for mm. example I still ride through town and see my MTTD officers with just their white uniforms. Nobody comes, no side arms, no bulletproof vests. So we are back to we are back to the, the the same thing. You find them. I mean, and sometimes I feel bad for them because this here's somebody in Kaswa who just picks a gun, chases the policemen, and shoots them down. You yeah. know, and then we said we'll protect them. But I, sorry, I don't see that protection. Well, even at the time the police incident happened, immediately after a new fresh consignments of, for instance, the bulletproof uh, uh, body mm, the, armor. A little uh, over 2,000. Uh, so. I think 5,000 okay. uh, came in. Mm. Uh, interactions were that some of our police officers were reluctant to wear because wearing a, the bulletproof mm. vest is some discomfort. Mm. But it also assures them their security, right. and so uh, we were assured that the police uh, authority were going to engage with the police mm. orientation and all that. I think it's a legitimate concern to mm. want to find out from the police administration how far we've those engagements and uh, how extensively these uh, vests mm. are being mm. deployed. Because we are not just procuring. Uh, these uh, protective wears, mm. uh, these uh, bulletproof vests mm. uh, to beautify uh, warehouses and all that, mm. they must be put to use. Mm. So I think that uh, it is a critical concern that we want to interrogate why okay. uh, these uh, body vests are not being used. But mm. I do know that uh, some have been brought in, large numbers of mm. uh, bulletproof body vests have been brought in uh, for the police. The first uh, uh, focus was on even the MTTD. Mm. I also know that there was talk about uh, body, body cams right? uh, being, mm. being, being brought in. Uh, we can check where the uh, procurement processes are mm. relative to that one. But it is important that there's a vision. Mm. I think that it's a good thing that our police, especially those who are on patrol duties, mm. can wear the body uh, cameras and they can pick some of these things and can be useful for investigations and so on and so forth. So I support the call. Okay. I think it's legitimate that we can interrogate right. uh, the police leadership to find out where we are mm. uh, on, especially the wearing of the vests that have already come in and mm. so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, I think... M- most grateful. Join us on WhatsApp 020216 That's our WhatsApp line. You can also go on Twitter and Facebook. Hashtag is TV3 New Day. Uh, let's make progress um, into another subject matter page 12 of no, the no, he made some inaccurate statements which uh, need to be corrected that uh, he speaks largely about 
some modest improvements, uh, seeming to suggest that perhaps the system was uh, in a coma, which is not the case. He knows fully well that the, the situation was dire. The, the alpha, it was that. How do you interpret dire? What is an, a synonym for dire? <laughs> you, you, you have done English. You are the teacher. Yeah, so I know, that is why I'm telling you that he made inaccurate statements. Mm. The, uh, the alpha project that he was talking about, mm. he, he knows when he started. Of course, it was, it was inherited. And in fact, the point you raise about the vice president mm. making that statement, it, it, it was captured. Uh, on uh, a number of portals mm. where he said it. It was actually at the passing out of uh, a batch of mm. uh, police recruits mm. where he said that uh, government was going to roll out a policy to fix CCTV cameras in every police station across mm. the country. So these are verifiable and it's important that we uh, put them on perspective. Okay. Thank recruitment you. is good, mm. but the recruitment should be done in a transparent, fair and verifiable manner. That's an age-old debate that well, both you of you that. have been having. So, so, I mean, when you were speaking about recruitment, I, I was just smiling, as you could see from my face. But I can we, see we your know, smile. We know, of course. But you can see by <laughs> looking at my eyebrows. When I smile, you know, I can see that you are smiling now. I can see that he's not smiling. Because he knows. <laughs> he, uh, now he's smiling. I can tell. I'm laughing. Well, well, I'm very good. They are all related, right? But the point I'm making is that Yes, we need to augment the numbers. Every government does its part. The difference between previous governments and the current government is that the recruitment processes, mm. Ghanaians and we in the minority, we have had cause to complain several about the way they are being done. And by and large, uh, many of us believe that these have become conduits, mm. the recruitment of party boys and girls into the services. So one thing that they can do to reassure Ghanaians that the police, men or other security services that they say they are augmenting with mm. numbers. Mm. Those persons that are being recruited are going to be people who truly deserve, not just because they belong to a political political party. Okay, thank you. The 12 of the uh, Daily Graph, uh, Ghanaian Times, I beg your pardon, says that um, we'll evacuate stranded Ghanaians home and more Ghanaians who have become stranded across the world would do uh, well due to uh, COVID-19, beg your pardon, uh, more Ghanaians who have been become stranded across the world due to COVID-19 uh, border closures are expected to be evacuated in the coming weeks. The Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration has indicated. The Deputy Minister uh, Charles Oredu, who disclosed this at yesterday's COVID-19 press briefing in Accra, said 230 patriot, uh, compatriots who arrived from Kuwait on Saturday were the first cohort of the people. The others, he said, will be evacuated in court because... Um, to bring all of them at a go would be overwhelming, adding that the plan was to bring all Ghanaians living abroad back home, but, they, uh, but not only, uh, only those who decide to come. The government cannot make a decision saying that all the people should come in at the same time, uh, and it's going to be very chaotic if we look at the numbers. So the decision was to take uh, that first step and uh, let those from Kuwait come in. Paris, the... Angle of bringing people in has been welcomed by, by many people. However, the concern is about footing the bill. Who is footing the bill? The fact that I'm stranded out there and I may not be able to, to get the money. My country is closed its borders, says it will bring me in, and I don't have money. Does it mean I'm stuck out there? My visa is expired? Am I stranded and hopeless? and looking forward to be devoured by coronavirus, for example. Is that it? Well, uh, Johnny, before I get to that, let me quickly make the point that, uh, let me assure my uh, senior colleague and our viewers that the people who are being recruited, the mm -hmm. large numbers uh, that are being recruited into the police and other security agencies mm -hmm. are Ghanaians uh, who have applied and gone through the processes mm -hmm. and are qualified. And so uh, I do not feel that we can make any apologies for that mm. and I think that when the announcements are made for recruits mm. uh, political party identifications are not one of the criteria that are listed so mm. I am not aware but we get we get we get political figures come come to say as part of the achievements that I have been able to help 20 people get recruited into army. Well, that's fine. You can help your police. constituent. The honorable member here can help his constituent. But that's wrong. No, it's not wrong. If you hear that there's, the police are recruiting mm. and he goes back to uh, uh, his constituency mm. and tells 
uh, the young people and young uh, men and women of the constituency. That's not what it means. It says, I have helped. And yeah, people actually helped. put it on posters for but, primaries. But I've that, seen it. That may be somebody's help. That you go and inform the people, you facilitate, you, you, you ask and them. I know that is not what they Well, mean. that's what I, I don't know what you know. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny. Look, I don't know what you Pius, 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 Pius is being... You, you and I, Pius, you and I, you and I know, look. People, people, so I've, I've seen persons people who are aspiring to become MP. No, and this NDC MPP, both of you do. I've announced it publicly. And I'm saying that I've seen persons aspiring to be either MPs or who are DCs, who are listing their achievements, who say we got 10 people into police, into army. That sends a wrong signal out there. We all I'm know what that. this is. I'm saying that the basis for recruiting somebody into the police. Mm doesn't have any partisan political coloration. Okay. It doesn't mean that somebody cannot uh, facilitate the process, tell people in constituency about the opportunities, even maybe pay for the application forms. Mm. So if- Or even MP, influence the process but to get them. That doesn't happen. If you say influence, the selection process is robust and automatic and is blind the people to, who wear the uniform say it happens. Yep. Well, the I people do not, who wear the uniform, they say it happens. They say people come in sometimes they don't meet the height requirement. Sometimes they can't. I mean, it's it, and it's so some. It hurts me because we 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 may be getting to that point where once you can show a party card, party A, party B, depending on who is in power, you get a chance to wear the uniform. And that's what I want us to look at passionately. Well, passionately. That's, that's not. In fact, the the basis of this is that I'm making the assurance. I'm okay. giving the assurance that the people who are being recruited, mm -hmm. these are Ghanaians. These are people who have applied and they are qualified. Okay. If you have any, or you or the honorable member have evidence to the contrary, please put it forward. But I cannot engage in speculative discussions about uh, what can or cannot happen. Mm. I am talking to you about what I know mm. is the fact that is advertised, the qualifications that are advertised, the processes that people go through. Mm. And I'm saying that it is fine if an MP goes to the constituency, an MP mm. that is responsive to the needs of the people, takes the message, Chances are that somebody may not even know that uh, police uh, recruitment uh, uh, processes have begun. Mm. But an MP goes and announces this. An MP even moves a further step. Because some, uh, some time back, uh, they were paying large, huge amounts of money mm. for the application. And MP mm. says, okay, go and buy the form. I can pay for it. And the MP facilitates. That's fine. But it does not mean that because you came in... Uh, because an MP informed you or even paid for your mm. forms, you are going to get in. So I'm giving the assurance to everybody that the police recruitments that are happening today mm. are blind to any political uh, uh, coloration. Okay. Again, the Alpha Project, yes. Uh, we, we, we can't spend all the time responding to it. Let's, let's, uh, let's uh, look at the evacuation of stranded Ghanaians. I'm asking a question that, well, the news has, has been welcomed and applauded on many fronts. However, the, the, who is bearing the cost and will it be free and fair? Will it be open to everybody? Will there be a limitation? For example, if I cannot fully fund it, it means that I'm stuck there in somebody's uh, obi So, Is that the case? Well, in principle, government has taken the decision to look at the case of uh, Ghanaians who reportedly are stranded outside of the jurisdiction. And from time to time, decisions will be made uh, about whether people from a certain cohort will be brought in mm. and under what conditions and circumstances they will be brought in. On Saturday, the first group of Ghanaians from Kuwait mm -hmm. were brought in. The circumstances up, uh, upon which they came may be different from the circumstances up, upon which others may arrive. In this case, mm. the Kuwaiti government uh, uh, footed the bill okay, of to bring the, 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 travel, the travel bill mm. to bring them in. The government of Ghana has taken over their uh, mandatory quarantine mm. for the uh, number of days mm -hmm. because we have to be sure that uh, they are not carriers of coronavirus mm. and so they are under mandatory quarantine. The state mm. is taking uh, charge of that cost, mm. but the cost of bringing them in we are told, uh, was borne by the Kuwaiti government. Okay. Uh, what the government has done, His Excellency the President got on the phone with all uh, heads of mission across the world. We have about mm -hmm. 64 missions across the world. Right. His Excellency the President got on the phone with mm -hmm. all mission heads mm -hmm. and charged them to assess the situation of Ghanaians living across the, across the world and to indicate to him and to mm -hmm. the government mm -hmm. 
the numbers that may be stranded and are willing uh, to come back. And so we have gathered data and mm -hmm. there are large numbers of Ghanaians outside of the jurisdiction that may be interested in coming back. Okay. Some are also quite capable and prepared mm -hmm. uh, to pay for their own transportation back home. Mm -hmm. Some are unable to. The categories are different. Some of them are students. And so, like I said, it is on a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. Some of them are within the African sub-region. Some of, of them are all over the world. And mm -hmm. so, on a case-by-case -case basis, okay. uh, depending on the considerations that mm -hmm. the two governments uh, may come to, mm -hmm. the two respective governments, depending mm -hmm. which countries we, we, are, we are bringing from. Because, uh, Johnny, you have mm -hmm. to recall that all over the world, mm -hmm. Uh, most countries have uh, closed their borders. Right. And so to go in there mm. and, and also evacuate your nationals from that country, mm. you need a certain uh, bilateral engagement with sovereign states. <coughs> and so as and when we have concluded these discussions mm. and a determination has been made that it is important that we evacuate uh, our colleagues back home, mm. we will do that. Where at at good comes cost. Like I said to you, there are times that the persons themselves mm. are prepared to pay, okay? But there are times, like, it depends on the categories. For instance, people traveled on uh, government scholarships, for instance. Mm. Uh, their studies are complete and they have to come back. Right. That one is a different ballgame. Uh, the state may take uh, advantage of, uh, may take um, charge mm. of those ones as well. Mm -hmm. But, for instance, individual businessmen who have traveled, uh, or uh, persons who live outside mm. on their own, applying their trade and doing uh, business and now want to come back home. Their limitation is actually the closure of the borders and not the cost of transportation. Okay. But there are some other persons too that admittedly are unable to afford. Mm -hmm. And so when the determination is made as to who needs that extra hand of mm. uh, being brought back so home, much. I'm sure that... So the, that, 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 that specific uh, deci decision can be made relative to mm. the, uh, uh, the peculiar problems. Mm. And so I am unable to answer directly okay. uh, to uh, the, the question, question of uh, uh, to whose cost, Which because I do point? not know what specific situation we are discussing. Are we okay. discussing the situation of the students, for instance? Okay. Are we discussing the students of uh, government workers who have traveled on official mm -hmm. duty? Mm -hmm. Or are we discussing persons who have been living outside there, applying their trade and want to come back. Mm. So it depends for, for students, on for example, will government bear the cost? Say again? Students who have been on government scholarship, uh, who went there depending on stipends from government to be able to survive. They are done with school. Maybe they have had their visas even expired because of, of the period. Who foots the bill for them? Well, like I said, these are, if you are the responsibility of the state, mm. Then that one, it begs the question. I mean, we know clearly that you are a student under government scholarship. Mm. You are the state's responsibility. Sometimes, even when you are there, mm. the state pays the stipends uh, for you. Right. And with the coronavirus, we used to pay stipends to students uh, in arrears. Mm. Now we are paying stipends to students in advance. advance okay. And so uh, we know that students who are on government scholarship and so on mm. are the state's responsibility. And so uh, that one, they sh we cannot split heads mm. about whose responsibility is it. But okay. when the decision is made mm. to airlift a certain cohort, the conditions under which that cohort will be brought the, the, will be discussed. The, the, the other angle is the fact that we're bringing them in badges. Now, for example, how do we determine the urgency to bring batch A or batch B? Have we looked at that modality as well? So somebody is in Netherlands, wants to come home, but you say it's not gotten to your turn. Wait till three months after because bringing all of you in, as Mr. Redu explained, will put a heavy toll on us at the quarantine centers. How do we make that determination that country A, it's time for you to come home? Country B, hold on. Well, the, the, the quarantine facilities are a consideration mm. because uh, we, we do not have uh, facilities, enough facilities to bring in the numbers mm -hmm. that have indicated. I'm talking to you about very large numbers. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to bring all of them in, practically you cannot deal with right. it. And we have to be honest mm -hmm. about these things. When they come in, they have to stay in isolation for mm -hmm. a minimum of 14 days. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you have to r be able to schedule in such a way mm -hmm. that you are able to uh, get in the people in phases. Mm -hmm. 
But that is just one part of the consideration. It's not that it is the only. Okay. Like I have said, if you wanted to remove persons, for instance, from some of these countries right now, mm. you need the uh, understanding and cooperation of that state. That, and that's, 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 that's understood. But I'm saying that, how do you make the determination? So the folks in South Africa say you want to come home. The folks in England want to come home. The folks in China want to come home. How do you make that determination that yeah, it's time for country For instance, if the South African government, it takes us one week to finish uh, consultations and discussions, mm -hmm. and they have agreed that they can temporarily allow us uh, to come in and open the borders specific to our evacuation, mm -hmm. that can happen. That's okay. why I'm saying that the consideration, mm -hmm. the basket of issues that have to be considered before uh, a decision is made, mm -hmm. is not just the quarantine facilities. Okay. And so there are other... Uh, angles to it as well, which mm. borders on sovereignty of, of, of countries. And okay. so we have to just understand and mm. trust mm. that the system has the principle, the policy decision, mm. but the implementation variables, they will be considered from time to time as uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. While they are stuck there and we're making the arrangements to bring them, and this is my final one to you, do we take care of them? For example, those who uh, beyond the students, those who perhaps went for medical checkup, they have expended all their monies and they are, they are patching with somebody. Do we give them something through the embassies? The embassies, most yes, of as, them. Yes, as, as and when we are aware, hmm. uh, I do know that there are instances that uh, persons have reached out to uh, the Ghanaian embassies outside and they have reached uh, uh, back to government home. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, help has been extended. Uh, in several instances. For instance, when our students in, in China, mm. during the lockdown in China, right. uh, we sent even food mm -hmm. and even stipends were sent in addition mm -hmm. to the general scholarship stipends that go. Uh, we also had another project to send some food mm -hmm. and even some uh, little stipends to support. Beyond that, I'm also aware that across the various countries, mm -hmm. the people who need help and have uh, made the states through the missions aware mm. that they, ha they have these uh, peculiar problems. Uh, help has been extended to them. Okay. Doc, the, this, this should be good news for you, um, especially knowing that your, some of your constituents may be stuck out there and they will get a chance to come home, giving all the arrangements and all the considerations. What do you say? Well, um I think that uh, it is a development that uh, should be welcome, mm. albeit a bit late, uh, because uh, this could have happened uh, much sooner than it is happening. Better late than never. Yes. Uh, I mean, for that much, I think that uh, I would concede. Mm. I, I say so because, you know, I used to be the deputy, I mean, I used to be on the Foreign Affairs Committee of Parliament. Right. And uh, my leader is... Uh, uh, was Okuja who still is the chair, the ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm. Uh, as always, he had made this call much earlier on. Mm. Uh, and this is not even uh, at the beginning where we were advocating for our students to be brought uh, uh, from China. Mm. Um, and so if now government has seen wisdom in uh, the call that he has made to uh, reach out, put in place uh, processes and, and programs uh, to bring stranded Ghanaians uh, from different parts of the world home. Mm. Uh, it is welcome. But the issue, though, which, has which to do it? with mm. the lack of clarity. Oh, and what? I think that is what your questions sought to do, mm. was to try and elicit clarity from government. Mm. Because as a deputy minister for information, is a, a government spokesperson, mm. at least number two, in terms of the hierarchy about how it was going to be done and what the, the parameters would be, mm. what the factors would be. And of course, he sought to talk about the different categories. But mm. even in doing so, uh, I would have thought that there should be a general bl uh, blueprint mm -hmm. about who, where, and how. And when they come, what do we do with them? Mandatory quarantine. Now, yes, so. I mean, mm. that is automatic. I don't know whether policy has changed. Right? No, the no, policy has not changed. Yesterday, they, that is what we all expect. Yeah. That no matter where they are coming from, when they come, clearly they must be quarantined right. for the, the, the recognized period of time mm. for us to be certain that you know they are not uh, bringing in 
the, the virus that is already with us and, and we are struggling to, to, to get a hold of. But an important point that still agitates my mind and many others is the issue of the Ghanaian retainees from Kuwait. Okay. Are they coming back voluntarily or they are being deported? Because, you know, the two are not the same. Well, uh, the, I, we had a conversation with a lady, one of the ladies who came uh, prior to their coming, and she had mentioned that um, for the arrangement that they have with the Kuwaiti government, the, their visas expire, and every year you have to renew. But because the missions are not working, it's difficult for you to renew. So the government put all of them in a shelter, about 300 or so of them, in a shelter feeding them and, and all of that. And then at some point, the government decided that, well, it's time to go home because we have reached an agreement with your government. So that's what it is. And I don't know what you call that or what, what we would call that, whether it's deportation or... Well, it's, it's, uh, I think this is a matter that we must pursue to get a better and a fuller understanding because the, the narrative has been mixed where some are assuming that they were deported. Mm -hmm. Others say that they came home voluntarily as a result of the challenges that, right. you know, Ghanaian citizens in, in almost any part of the world mm. uh, would face as a result of this uh, corona mm. uh, uh, virus. But be as it may, they are, they are Ghanaian were they, citizens. Were they deported or were they brought? brought well, I, I think that you have spoken to it uh, uh, quite eloquently. Mm. The f f first of all, the visa to stay mm. or permission to stay in Kuwait is not granted by the government it's certainly of Ghana, not, certainly. It's by the Kuwaiti uh, yeah. government. So yeah. it is not a question of our embassy not working. Mm. It is that uh, every country, uh, state, every nation state is taking steps to protect their own citizenry. Mm. And so they are unable to renew a lot of these visas. And, and so for me, uh, un until and unless there is a basis for uh, this detailed uh, inter interrogation, mm. I, I am rather excited that the people who have come, they have come willingly. They are mm. happy to have come mm. and, and they are back home. But largely... No, I agree with you. Uh, largely okay. is because most of them haven't had their visas renewed. Okay. okay. And, and, and I, I, I agree let, with him. In let, principle, I don't think that we, we are, you know, in opposition okay. to each other in terms okay. of bringing let, them let, home. Let's hear from Etanam and then I'll, I'll come to you to, to wrap up. Etanam, right, a few up. more messages uh, this morning. I'm a Pia Wilson, our best junior inside La Paz. I think the Medra must face the law drastically to deter others who do same to their tenants. Good morning, Johnny. Someone was shot dead in Jirap exactly a week ago by unknown persons using unregistered motorbike, but the police watches on in in the town while unregistered motorbikes still being used our lives are in danger in upper west from ike jirapa tell pios uh february 10 2018 our vice said that and by end of year not so clear if honorable clement apak is suggesting that mpp government is influencing police recruitment processes it means they ndc were engaged in that as well in any case whoever uh, is recruited is a ghanaian period Sofo Yamusa in Kumbugu. Good morning, TV3. Is this government serious in fighting the COVID-19? I don't think so. He is only interested in spending money. A very good morning to Honorable Felicia J, the golden MP for Kentampo South by Ali Ibn Yakubu. Hello, Johnny. The MPP always excuse Ghanaian with the uh, what we came and met thing, as if since 1992, you people have never been in government before. You saw all these mess you always complain about when you were making a whole lot of promises to us. So if you meet nothing at all, uh, you met nothing at all, you have to stop complaining and do the work. Abdul Mumin, Abdul Hamid Tamale. Uh, good morning, please. Does the police personnel now have cameras on them? Do police personnel notice where there is traffic hot zone? A place like the Medina Atomic Runabout, Abu Sokai Runabout, have been creating serious traffic. Nicholas, okay. Ghana is indeed blessed to have His Excellency Nana Dodankwe Kufado as our president. In this pandemic, he has shown that he indeed cares for his country and not the next election. God bless him and Dr. Baumia. My greetings to Dr. Kwesi Itiafo Rashid, incoming MP, Ijuma Koenyan Isiam constituency from Barrister Senior Ijumako. I am... Adowogbo Amos Bright, what are the safety measures given to the northern part of Ghana as far as 
COVID-19 is concerned. And the northern part is recording low percentage in the virus currently because we are now living in fear. The MPP is more interested in money than stranded Ghanaians abroad. Look at the rate at which they rushed for the IMF cash. These are people who wanted Ghanaians in diaspora to vote, yet they are not interested in evacuating them. Chris from Ashalibuchi. The last one. This government has simply run out of ideas because when NDC made the call that uh, the government should evacuate Ghanaian students who are stranded in China, the government resisted. So what has changed? Greetings to Honorable Apak. This is from Kofi Seidu. That will be all for messages this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Doc? Yeah, the point I was uh, making is that the state indeed has a responsibility mm -hmm. to ensure that, you know, citizens, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of wherever they may find themselves, uh, even when they are experiencing challenges, mm -hmm. uh, they have uh, dire situations beyond their own uh, control mm -hmm. uh, to move in and, and try to assist them. So on the basis of that principle, mm -hmm. uh, as I said earlier, better late than, than never. But I think uh, it would be good to get, you know, as Ghanaians have now come to know, better and further particulars so mm. that there is clarity as he was narrating the different categories. Mm. Uh, what is going to be the criteria, for example? Uh, how can we be assured that the processes are going to be transparent mm. and that, you know, there will not be any selectivity mm. in ensuring that every Ghanaian who is stranded and indeed voluntarily mm. wants to come home uh, is given an equal opportunity. Okay. And as you said earlier, these are very important issues because mm. what, what is going to inform the decision of the ministry or mm. government to decide, for example, that we are going to bring Ghanaians from the U.S. home mm. or we are going to bring Ghanaians from South Africa home, for okay. example. Mm. Uh, he sought to speak about the host nation's requirements, mm -hmm. their rules and regulations, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a point to be, you know, acknowledged. Mm -hmm. But that is also why we have our missions there and we have heads, heads of missions. By now, if indeed it's the case that the president personally spoke to the 64 heads of missions, mm -hmm. by now, they should know exactly what the situation is mm -hmm. in the countries that they represent us in mm -hmm. and to be able to advise government on, on, on what to do. Okay. So let, let's see the way uh, it, it, it some, but in some, principle, I don't have mm. a, a, a challenge with that. Is there is there a cap to the numbers of people we can bring from one country? No, I'm not aware. Uh, there's no cap. Okay. Uh, the the embassies, the numbers are different from country okay. to country. If you go to America, for instance, the number of Ghanaians in America mm. are much, much Seems. more than mm. uh, the numbers that may be in another country. Okay. So we cannot have a I cap. know that, for example, in America, we're talking about New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. So, yes, so, so, and indeed it is true that the mm -hmm. president has been on the phone with all 64 heads of missions and that the heads of mission have put out information and we mm -hmm. have gathered data on the numbers. Okay. So for instance in America already we know the numbers who are uh, interested in coming back home. Okay. And we also know the numbers who need help to come back home. Okay. And the ones who are able to, to, to come back on their own, just mm -hmm. that they need the facilitation, the airports to be opened and all that. But okay. let me also just say quickly that I think that right now, mm. uh, everybody uh, sees that government has been vindicated in its earlier decision not to blindly follow the advice that was clearly not how, properly how? taught about. If I were you, I would start No, no, it's important. How? Because if I were you, I would start that with it. Because the Ghanaian students themselves in Wuhan mm. have spoken on the matter. But people are coming home but, anyway. But, 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 so so it is that it's a question of timing. And what, it's a what question of... What, what has Because changed? you see, when... Africa is yet to peak. That's right. Yeah, but uh, that's what I'm saying to you that when you make these uh, 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 advices and say go and bring the students from China, mm. go and bring this, we know that Italy went and brought students from uh, uh, and people from uh, Wuhan. Mm. We know South Africa did the same. You see the the ripple effect. At the at the time they, the they call was them, made, Italy, Italy, for example, put them among people that had a lot of underlying factors. Exactly, they didn't quite understand them. 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 So the two, the two situations are different. No, they are not different. If Italy had not brought them back, oh, mm. that's what I'm saying that the timing mm. is critical. And even in bringing these uh, our brothers and sisters back home, mm. you were trying to, uh, let's get down to the details of when is which country coming. I'm right. saying that mm. there have to be different considerations for different countries right. because different countries have their own different 
peculiar situations. Okay. For instance, if you go to America where they have big, large numbers mm. infested, if you want to bring people from there, the strategy towards America would definitely be different from, say, if you're bringing people from other countries that have smaller numbers of infestations. Mm. And so it is a case-by-case -case consideration. But I'm surprised that we have going, we will be going back to the Wuhan story where right now government has been vindicated, the students no. themselves have no, spoken. Please, please talk about vindication. Let, 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 let me have my bite on this. No, at, at time is up. It, it is too tasty to avoid. <laughs> I mean, you know fully well that in fact, we have been uh, vindicated because when we were no, asking no, for no, them no, to no, run, no, 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 we no. didn't say they should come and then just be allowed to uh, mingle come with, with the domestic population. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. They would have been quarantined. Honorable, oh, there is literature exactly now. There is what you did. There is literature now to suggest that even the process of bringing people mm. who from their various homes were not infected. What I am there is saying literature is that now that there is a higher risk, about 79% risk, of bringing when people we, to the we, airport when system. We asked them to because of the, the processes bodies. that happened. It took a whole week before they locked the bodies. But mm. which time no, because, no, because you see, later just, on, when they started quarantining those who were coming, mm. didn't we see the numbers? No, but I'm saying to you that, we, no, no, we no. have not said that just bring them in and send them to Fumbisi mm. and, and, you know, Dodoa and Mampong. Mm. You were to bring them and then we will follow the UN protocols at WHO. At that time, it was made very clear that people who were coming from countries that had recorded the virus needed mm. to be quarantined. Okay. I mean, how do you feel vindicated? In fact, you've not been vindicated. No, we have been vindicated. Thank you. Okay, you be, let the people decide who's been vindicated. <laughs> but, uh, Honorable, uh, are you recording cases of COVID-19 in Parliament? There's confusion. Well, that is uh, another matter that, uh, you know, needs clarity. Because uh, by the Speaker's directive, we mm. are all to be uh, tested. Right. And uh, yesterday, there was information to the effect that some uh, test results had come. Mm. Uh, I read from uh, a news portal that two MPs and uh, about 13 staff. staff were but parliament. later on, the parliamentary service, the PRO, put out uh, a Ketado. statement mm. denying that. But the problem is that there are some MPs who were tested and, and they know that they are negative. So if the parliamentary service is saying that no test results have come, how did those MPs get to know that they are negative so it's a matter that needs uh, clarity but mm -hmm. i can tell you that uh, in my opinion parliament is not safe why is it not safe by virtue of the type of place it is uh, the fact that we are always in constant uh, interaction mm -hmm. uh, uh, with, 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 with people okay uh, parliament is not safe if it turns out that what has been reported uh, is true mm -hmm. then it will be my suggestion that parliament ought to be immediately adjourned I thought Parliament said it was digitizing its processes. Well, I can tell you and that. So that you could have, like, we, we have people working from a home. A, lo a lot of things were Zoom said. Zoom classes for children. A lot of things were said, including looking at the setting arrangements, the possibility of finding another space that can allow for us to respect the, uh, and I like to call it, fiscal distancing. Mm. Uh, and you are even speaking about uh, using uh, the digital... Mm. Uh, platforms. I even called earlier on for us to consider uh, what I would call virtual sitting and all of that. Well, none of that has happened. So we we go and uh, we we take the needed precautions. Uh, but at, at some point, mm. as I said, if this turns out to be true, then, then the only option will be to, to adjourn parliament. Is it not a cause of worry for you, for example, that now we're told that we'll not put out the names of persons who may have tested positive? Or who could test positive from within parliament and say an MP goes silent or is not in the public eye for some time, it will raise speculations and that could fester stigma, something that we're trying to shoot down, don't you think? Well, clearly we, we are not in normal times. So, I mean, all of these issues uh, must be considered, but that is an entire decision mm. that has to be taken by the leadership of parliament. As mm. you know, I'm a, a backbencher, uh, as loud as I am, you know, Okay. I don't have a say when leadership is uh, making decisions. Okay. But I can always uh, proffer uh, some ideas. Mm. And if they deem them uh, worthy, they can do that. But your point, your point is true. But this is a, a general national problem. Uh, as you know, okay. names are not being published. So okay. why should parliament publish names? Okay, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Pius and is saying... Well, I haven't had any bite at this last part about parliament. Oh. You want to go to parliament too? Well, okay. if you if you if you, give you know, he tried twice, so I think he has given up. So yeah, obviously, oh. yeah, he has given up. <laughs>
have you given up? Oh, he has. Obviously, he's okay. not contesting. That's not what we are discussing. But <laughs> no, I'm saying that the last. You want to the last bit all, because I. Okay, I one find minute. It, one minute, Richie. Richie apologies. Well, I, 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 I think that uh, let's leave it to, to the parliamentarians. Uh, I, I thought that there were some comments that uh, needed to to uh, to be clarified. Mm. Uh, but Parliament is the master of their own rules. Mm. I'm surprised that uh, the leadership of Parliament and membership of Parliament cannot seem to agree as to whether results are out or not. Mm. I do not know which ones to believe, if it, we should believe the PR section of the Parliament mm. or uh, individual members of Parliament who are claiming that they are negative. What's my understanding of the process is that if your sample is taken and you are tested, mm -hmm. you are gotten back to if you are positive and not if you are negative. So I do not know how an individual is able to find out that they are negative. Mm. And then I also think that it will be uh, uh, curious mm. for either the, the portal that reported the matter to explain how it got by that information or that okay. they must apologize to the people that indeed that story may be misleading. Okay. Because already, even from the members of parliament mm. themselves, mm. they are getting worried and some of them are calling for adjournments mm. already. Mm. Mm. And mm. so it's a serious matter it's and serious it has matter. to be uh, appreciated very, very seriously. Okay. And I think it's that true. we have to look beyond this and, and get uh, a little deeper into it. I'm okay. very worried about well, it. I agree with it, it falls within your domain, so uh, I agree with we, we will follow up. It has created a lot of anxiety. Oh, it falls fall. squarely in the, in the domain of parliament. I'm talking about the they, portal that put it out. The portal is... Uh, well, we don't we don't get into editorial discretion. It's no, not no, our I'm business. Not you should get into uh, to, to determine what the newspapers or the news portals put out. Yeah, yeah publicly you won't do it, but privately you will. No, we don't. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Honorable Pius Enam Hajide is a deputy minister for information of the Republic of Ghana, and also Dr. Clementa Park is the member of parliament for the Bumsa South constituency. He's in the race one more time, hopefully to win it and represent his people in Parliament. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the candidate is beating him. <laughs>